What if Joe Biden was assassinated? Well, I think the first place to start would be to acknowledge that whether or not you like him or his politics, or were happy when he was sworn in as president, or whatever opinions you may hold of President Biden, it would be an utter shame and absolute tragedy if something like that were to happen to him. He's a human being with a life and a family, and no one deserves for anything like that to happen to them. So while we hope we are never in a situation where we have to see what happens in this scenario, sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what if? I mean, that is literally the point of this entire channel. So, let's ask ourselves. Well, firstly, it's highly unlikely that this would happen. Only 8 out of 46 presidents, 17% have passed away while in office, and 4 of those were because of assassination. So at this point, the odds really aren't in his favor, which is a good thing. But what happens on the off chance that tragedy does strike? Well, there would definitely be a lot of chaos and panic immediately. Authorities would start a manhunt for the perpetrator that would know no bounds if they weren't immediately caught or known. No rock would be left unturned until they found out who did it and hopefully their reasoning why as well. Other than the investigation, it would mostly just be pandemonium amongst the American people for a while. There of course would be a huge funeral for President Biden. Depending on where he had passed, his body would most likely be returned to Washington. There would definitely be an autopsy performed, and at this time, military authorities would begin preparing and planning for his funeral. It's also likely that before his burial, he would be taken to Capitol Hill to lie in state so that the American people could line up for viewings, which of course would be heavily guarded. In fact, it's very likely that until his burial, his body would be heavily guarded at all times. Many representatives from around the world would come to America in order to attend the state funeral, and in general, it would just be a really sad time for all. The good news in that awful situation is that the 25th Amendment of the United States Constitution makes it very clear exactly what would happen next. The Vice President, so in this case Kamala Harris, would be sworn in to take over the presidential responsibilities until the end of the mandate. Okay. That's pretty straightforward. So what if Kamala Harris ended up being sworn in as president? Well, we would have the first female president. Vice President Harris, who would then be President Harris, would have to pick someone that she would like to be her vice president. Once she picks, all that's needed for them to be sworn in would be a majority of both houses to approve of the nomination, and boom, new president and vice president. If Vice President Harris were to one day become president, one can only speculate about what sort of things she would get done and what change she would bring. Some things we can assume, based on her previous work and things she has said, is that she would turn a focus to immigration. During her time as District Attorney of San Francisco, she dedicated a lot of time toward helping undocumented immigrants become citizens. So based on this history, we can only assume that is something that will remain important to her. Vice President Harris also once worked on what is called the Back on Track initiative, which was aimed at helping nonviolent offenders with access to education, the opportunity to maintain employment, and to take care of themselves and their families. It is, however, equally as true that during her first three years as district attorney, San Francisco's conviction rate jumped from 52% to 67%. Harris has spoken out a lot in favor of the Black Lives Matter movement. As attorney general, she helped create Open Justice, which is an online platform designed to make criminal justice data available to the public. This database was meant to help improve police accountability by collecting information on the number of deaths and injuries of those in police custody, and in 2004, she declined to pursue the death penalty against a man who had killed San Francisco police officer Isaac Espinoza, but also later declined to support two ballot initiatives that would have banned the death penalty. She also once spoke about ending privatized health care at a town hall, but then later denied that statement, saying she had misheard the question. Later, she released a health care plan that still did include privatized health care. So while we can assume there might be some good that could potentially come from her presidency, if we were in this situation, she does have a history of being on both sides of certain issues, so it's tough to be sure exactly what her presidency would look like. If, in some even more terrible circumstances, both President Biden and Vice President President Harris were unable to continue serving as president and vice president, the next in line for the presidency would be the Speaker of the House, so in this case, Nancy Pelosi. 
Nancy has been serving as the Speaker of the House of Representatives since 2019, and she previously served from 2007 to 2011. She is the first female Speaker of the House and is currently in her 18th term as she was first elected to Congress in 1987. I'm not exactly sure what a Pelosi presidential reign would look like, but I do know it would have many people divided. While the system is set up in a way to ensure that there is no presidential vacancy, I'm sure the American people would feel cheated by having someone they didn't elect come into such a great position of power. While the President of the United States is an important position of power within the country, it's also a position of power and responsibility on a global scale. America is a leading country and it needs a president that is a reflection of that. I'm not insinuating that Nancy isn't, I'm just making a note of the weight that this position really does hold. If Pelosi were to become president, it would be interesting to watch as she was a strong and vocal critic of former President Donald Trump, and it was under her leadership that the House of Representatives impeached Trump twice. It would be interesting to see how she fares as president and to see if she could live up to all of the criticism she hurled towards former presidents. Again, I don't mean this in a way that's leaning to one side or another, and it's important that we are critical of all presidents. I'm just saying that it would be interesting for us to watch as she experiences the other side of things. If President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Speaker of the House Pelosi are all unable to serve as president, then the duty rolls over to the Senate president, who right now is Patrick Leahy. Senator Leahy is a Democrat who has had an extensive career in politics, and oddly enough, he's also acted in five of the Batman franchise's movies and animated TV shows, which I thought was just a fun and random fact. Patrick Leahy was 34 when he was elected, which made him the youngest U.S. Senator from the Green Mountain State. It is said that he is active on human rights issues, as well as leading negotiations on anti bills, and he is also the chief sponsor of the Innocence Protection Act, which was designed to address flaws in the administration of capital punishment. While I can't exactly predict what his presidency would look like, it's a pretty safe assumption that he will continue to focus on these issues that clearly have been important to him and have been the focal point of his political career thus far. If Senator Leahy is unavailable, the presidency then rolls over to the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. Antony previously served as Deputy National Security Advisor and Deputy Secretary of State under the Obama administration. While again, I'm not exactly sure what his presidency would look like, it does seem like he has more than enough applicable and relevant experience that it seems as though this is a selection that would make sense. From here, the list of those who would be next in line continues on, but the chances of us getting even this far are slim to none. It is highly unlikely that President Biden will be unable to finish his term as president, and even less likely that in the chance he can't, that Vice President Harris wouldn't be able to fill the vacant role and choose her own vice president. I guess the good news from today's video is that, in the event of a horrible situation, there are laws and protocols in place, but the bad news is that the future always remains uncertain. Alright LBQ fam, that has been our video for today. As always, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and remember to be kind to each other even though we might all have different opinions. If you liked today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozolowski, and I'll see you all next time for the next big question. Bye!